Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Needles, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and hear Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Terry Adwin. Hi hi. Sanswinda. Hello. And Krister. Hello. Hello everyone and hello Krister and welcome to the show. Thank you. And you picked quite a week to start because this week we have some news relating to the next expansion. We'll begin with a little update, update 24.3, which includes a number of small items we discussed last week, including a little bit with a pre-order. And... Today, actually, I did have a look at one of the new cosmetic pets, the Bumblebee, because while questing with Cinders and Sands, I was was having a Bumblebee following me all over the place. (laughs) It's kind of cute. Yeah, cute little bee called Dumbledore. Oh. Uh Uh-huh. Actually, they're relatively big <laughs> bees, aren't they? Well, yeah. Well, considering the size of the bee that was following me, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a bit big. It wasn't as big as my high elf. Well, no, not quite that big. <laughs> But you got to remember, I was playing a hobbit at the time, so it looked pretty big to me. It was pretty big. I think maybe it was bigger than you. A, yeah, maybe it could even be a flying mount for a hobbit. That would be That'd cool. Be amazing. We should have that. Should totally a flying have mount that. for a hobbit. Yes. For the bees. Hmm. They're big enough. Well... The question is whether or not you'll be able to hold on properly. Oh, fine. <laughs> then maybe they can make the little Mumak a rideable mount. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, the one thing to note on this, they did add a known issue here in that the Stoundax introduction has some lines pending translation into French and German. Therefore, a few things do need to be translated before it's all ready in there. But just said some lines, that probably means that, does that mean that there are also some lines that have already been translated? I guess is what that implies in there. And is there anything else that anyone wants to add since we went through all this last week already? Um, only that having seen the new character design stuff that they've got on the uh, character creation screen, A, it's really awesome, and B, I want to know who um, who designed the outfits. <laughs> Was it just me, or were those mostly Dunlin outfits? A lot of them were Isengard outfits, but there were pieces um, of other stuff, too. Fair. Maybe they consulted one of the cosmetic people who I'm sure had to sign quite an NDA in order to do it. <laughs> or they didn't tell them what it was for. Hmm. I remember which one. But yeah, we would like to know which one of them was, if that's the case. Therefore, let's go into the next thing. Minus Morgul pre-orders and information. Instead, X Dwarves are available if you do a pre-order. Now. That's yeah, that's right. So we now have pre-orders for Minus Morgul, which is something that I was ex- now I was expecting the twenty-four dot three to be maybe a c- one or two weeks later than it was posted, but I did expect pre-orders to come with it. Since that seems to be the modus operandi on the last couple of expansions. 
So let's have a look at this. We'll begin with the standard edition, where you get, of course, Minas Morgul, which is over 250 new quests, seven new instances, this an updated crafting guild, the Black Book of Mordor storyline. Please note that if you have either Mordor or Minas Morgul, you get the entirety of the Black Book of Mordor. So either one of them will do it. And a new Sheila braid. <coughs> <laughs> well, I know Sans is super excited for Sheila. No. <laughs> I mean, unless we can see Sheila completely, totally trounced with no hope of ever returning again, that might be worth it. They did a video for the expansion, though, which I thought was really cool. Um, It's linked in the article, and (laughs) there's a little sneak peek at Sheila at the end. Sans, imagine putting a saddle on Sheila. (laughs) No, 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 no. A saddle on Sheila. <laughs> I don't think so. No, thank you. Not for me. <laughs> no Sheila mounts, huh? Please, no. <laughs> Little In Moomox this... are cute. Little yes. spiders, big spiders, humongous spiders. No, thank you. Yes. In this, this we've got the Stout Axe Dwarf Race, an extra character slot, and expedition supplies that are sent to the first character you log into after you enter the code in order to turn in the thing. Actually, if you're probably going to be logged into a character when you enter the code, in which case it'll be del- that's the deliver that's the character that gets it. And the expedition actually the expedition supplies I think is something that that's uh, the expedition the... supplies actually come out when the oh, yeah with, with the expansion line. yes but that is one of the other things and that'll include some experience stuff in order to help you go through a little bit faster now that's the standard edition which is the forty dollar one then we have the collector's edition as usual we have three tiers here and of course you have the same stuff that we already talked about but you also get a character level boost to 120 for one character in other words the newest Valor whatever they're going to call that yeah I'm kind of wondering what they're going to call the new Valor thing (laughs) (laughs) yes and there are some cosmetics of the Great Alliance, exclusive armor and cloak, shepherd dog pet, and a mount of the Great Alliance. And I've been wearing the armor and cloak on my warden on Langevol the last couple of days in there. And also there's the mount and it really goes well with it in my opinion. The shepherd dog, though, is significantly be- bigger than my hobbit. That would be another good mount option. <laughs> the one that looks like a mount is the other dog that we'll go into later. True. And there are also two titles, hero, past and present, and heroine, past and present. I will presume that it's really one title, depending on... Yes. Or... I haven't checked. Yeah, you get, you get, because that would make more sense. And there is an improved expedition supplies, where in addition to those XP boosts and reputation supply boosts, you'll also get 10 scrolls of empowerment. Which on Landerval are currently selling on the auction house for like 280 gold for a stack of 10. Just to give you some idea of in-game currency, currently what those are going for when they're not bound to your account. The ones you'll get here would be bound to your account. Right. And that's what you get for the collector's edition, which is going to run you $80. So I'm sure you're all guessing that the next level is going to be $130 with the Mordor expansion. And what is in the new Ultimate Fan Bundle? Of course, we've got the stuff that we had in the collector's edition. And 
On top of this, we also have some cosmetics of the Dead City. Exclusive armor and cloak. Harnessed shepherd dog pet, which is the one that I think looks like it's more likely ready to be a mount. <laughs> and mount of the Dead City. I haven't looked at... Has anyone here looked into that set since I've been staying to the Great Alliance stuff? It's pretty cool. Maven was running yes. around in it yesterday, too. I've got a couple of characters who have it as an option. Okay. And they're introducing a new system, Cosmetic Weapon Auras. Now, that's going to be a general thing, but one of the things that comes in the Ultimate Fan Bundle is a Aura of the Dead City, so you could replace your Aura that you get for your title with this Aura, and you have that to replace it. So if you wanted to have a ghostly white Aura on your legendary item, then you can slap the Aura of the Dead City on it. It kind of and... looks frosty. Yeah, yeah it, it looks, looks very cool. Yeah, it looks very frosty in its style. I like the Valerian Aura, so I've I'm not really using it at the moment. And you also get rid of an aura because they also give you two auras, which essentially dampen out the aura that is there. I actually but, like that even better. I haven't used it yet, but I can see where it would come in handy. And I should note that you will be getting these, that you can put these into your wardrobe. So it's not a matter. So it's not like you can only put it in one. Oh, oh, okay. oh what do I do now? But you can put these into your wardrobe, and you can and... equip them cosmetically, even if they're not in your wardrobe. You can copy them into right. the cosmetic slots. Mm, the caveat to that is that it only shows up as a weapon effect if you already have a weapon effect on your weapon. So if you are using something with common damage, you show no effect whatsoever. Oh, is that the case? Yeah. Ah, okay. That's ah, good. I did not test that out. Then there is a third title on top of the hero past and present, and that is Ablakul. I have no idea what that means. It just sounds really cool. I will assume it has something to do with the stout axes. <coughs> but that's just a guess. And a cryptal XP accelerator for all characters. That is essentially another earring. Now I should note concerning the earring is that the original intent was that it not stack. The XP not stack with the other earring. But apparently there was an outcry from this, so they're thinking of changing that. I'm so glad that they're changing that, because yeah. I really need... They need the stack. I don't have all the other XP items from the other pre-orders. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. That's right because, I, right, because I've got other XP items already, because I've got the back item, and I've got the... And I've got the pocket item. Yeah, and I don't get those on my characters, because... I started playing too late. Uh, and there's going to be an exclusive housing teleport for all characters. So therefore, because before we had the Mordor door, what do you think this is going to be? Okay, wait question. a minute, Smorgle? I might just need a creepy room in my house to fill with. <laughs> Housing <laughs> teleport items. <laughs> Let's go say hi to Shelob, guys. I mean, maybe it won't be creepy, but I would bet it'll be creepy. Oh, yeah. This is. Yeah, maybe it'll be a cocoon that teleports you. No, 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 no. Oh, no. That yes. won't go in my house. Yes. <laughs> I hope not. If it is, I hope you can place it outside on the furthest corner of your property. <laughs> Three relics for each of your characters. These, of course, these are higher level relics in there, and and you get one of each of the three types: a gem, a 
Wait, where is it? So sit- Wait, yeah. a setting hey. in a rune. Setting a gem in a rune. Yeah, that's right. Just shows you how much I pay attention to legendary items these days. Right. And, of course, your Expedition Supplies is the ultimate Expedition Supplies, which is also going to include... First off, it'll double the number of Scrolls of Empowerment from 10 to 20. And second, 5,000 Virtue XP. And that is the list of what is in there. And they also have under here, of course, a description of each of them. And we have the new race. Uh, we talked about the Staldax Dwarves. This meets the lost civilization of the Staldax Dwarves and lives their story of reemergence. And I think we've all played at least a little bit of a Staldax in the last week. Yep. 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 Okay. So we've all had a little taste of that and of the intro in there. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they did a really good job. Really good job in that one. Yes. And now there are going to be two new regions, the Morgul Vale and Mordor Besieged. And this is a very strange one. And we're trying to think how, because this is going to require time travel. And I mean more time travel than we usually have in this game. <laughs> yeah, usually... it sounds really interesting. I'm excited to see how they do this. Yes. What's this hobbit doing uh, Doing in the Siege of Mordor? <laughs> <laughs> Probably have oh, to work on saying, what's a hobbit? Do you have any pie? <laughs> I'll just go around. Please give a pie. A p- do you have a pie to spare? Please. I don't know why I'm here, but please let me have a pie. Yeah. I've got lost in here. What's? Yeah. What are we doing? Why are we here? Yes. What's the second age business stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So therefore, the two new regions, the Morgul Vale, obviously, is the stuff of the Dead Sea, which is the sequel to what we've been doing. And I get the impression that the Mordor Besieged is something that's in the past rather than than in the current timeline. There was actually going to be some discussion. Gosh, oh, that's right, because I intended to listen to the start of yesterday. Of Friday stream because I only caught the tail end of that, so I and I forgot to do that, which I think they might have discussed that somewhere. And they did refer to it being a rather unusual thing that they're doing there, and that it and based on what they said, it does sound like that they're actually having two different timelines for what you're doing there. We have to see what's really going on when we get there. Then get seven new three person and six person instances. I think that's I think. They said it was something like it's three or four of one and and then the other one for the other. So therefore, so for the three and six, there'll be a total of seven three and six player instances. And of course, a new 12 player raid against one of Morgul Vale's most notorious residents. And since the title of that section is Face Shelob, you know what notorious. And anyway, even in the stream yesterday, they were actually using the term that I've been using for how many years has it that I've been saying she Raid, she Raid <laughs> <laughs> but yes yes, even now the people at Standing Stone are using the words she Raid <laughs> maybe they'll <laughs> equip us with blow torches. <laughs> blow torches. <laughs> we could invent them we can invent blowtorches. All right. James just wants to set the whole Morgul Vale on fire. Maybe. Well, yes. I can imagine why. That would solve an awful lot of problems, though. <laughs> uh, I mean, it really and might. Course, and cures Uncle at the same time and Thingris while you're at it. Yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah. I'm for this. Let's do it. Then, level cap increase reached character level 130 with the launch of the expansion. So that answers how many levels? 10 levels. 
10 levels then. I think that's no big surprise. Can you try that one more time, Pine, please? Uh, yes. I would say that level 130 being the target is probably no surprise to anyone who knows the pattern of how these expansions and their level caps go. And interesting enough, new crafting guild benefits. Earn guaranteed rare items faster. Crafting and faster crafting and more. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Now I, I think they did say that there is not a new tier of guild crafting. It's just it's new items related to guild crafting. And does that mean that I'm going to have to actually try to finish leveling up my guild crafting, which is, I think, Man, I hope not. Behind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, we'll have to see what comes in there. And, of course, the Black Book of Mordor vanquished the lingering remnants of evil and stopped the remaining denizens of Mordor who conspire for power in the wake of Sauron's defeat. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yes. So we'll see what we can do on that score. But uh, that is what is coming up for Minas Morgul. And that is due to be released October 29th, 2019. But just for convenience sake, I've just been saying Halloween, even though it's technically a couple of days before it that it's currently scheduled. And the usual disclaimer that if something goes wrong, it could they could push it back as far back as November 30th if things go wrong. But they're shooting for October 29th. Anybody else have anything to wish to add? I'm so excited. Yeah, now I'm looking this... forward to the stout axe. Uh, yeah. See where where they go. Where, where I can't wait that. to get my stout axe back to Mordor. Yeah. No, I remember a couple of years ago when they were doing Ravenloft that they were trying to get Ravenloft out. I on either Halloween or a couple of days before Halloween. And oh, that's right. Halloween would have been on a Tuesday that year, I think. And yeah, they didn't quite make it. They had to push it back into November. And I'm sure, I'm sure they really wanted a Halloween <laughs> release for Ravenloft because that oh, would have been perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah. So we hope them better luck on getting Minas Morgul ready and polished by then than they had with Ravenloft. I've really enjoyed the last couple uh, uh, areas that they've created. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do. Oh, what what they could do here with Minas Morgul. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I really hope that there will be a... That there will at least be a version of the Sheila Braid that's going to be a little bit more casual friendly than... Anvil of Winterstitz, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have to see. Ooh, how, how that goes because that would be what I'd like to see. I'll probably wind up having to go into the real raid and get squashed like the bug that she love is. Yeah, but after Anvil, you should be well prepared for getting smashed over and over again. Oh, I've so, never uh, done Anvil though. <laughs> oh, oh, then I'll uh, I probably just wound it for you. Uh, you'll do you'll do great. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure, based on everything I've heard, that I'll get smashed. I've heard descriptions of it when I did the Black Book of Mordor, where they give you the line, where they give you the summary of what I mean, happened in there. It's only sometimes that bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the version they describe in the Black Book is when it goes wrong. <laughs> well, that's when it like barely goes right. Ah, <laughs> yeah, barely it's goes merciful. right. Not best, not best scenario, but not worst either. Yes. 
Now let's head into the Lotra Beacon issue 130, where speaking um, of... Sorry, one second. I just happened to glance at the chat. Uh, Guarindus was saying that, by the way, according to a tweet from the Duero Scholar, who, as you know, is our official word for here at Lotra Players about all things Dwarvish, um, Ablakul means powerful, strong, and mighty in Neo Kudzul. Okay. In old Kuzul. All right. So that does, that goes pretty far back then. And when you're putting it that way, it could mean that in the Staldax version of the language, it might still be that, but it's transformed some maybe in the Longbeard version or something like that, perhaps if he said old Kuzul. We'll have to find out maybe. Or maybe it's something you learn while you're in the distant past version of Mordor. <laughs> Let's then head out into the Lotra Beacon, where, speaking of beacons, we are looking at... Ooh, that looks like Minas Morgul with that, with that beacon that they have on the top that is described by Tolkien. That looks like a really nasty place. It does. But it doesn't it look too like... spidery, so let's go. Yeah. It looks, in a way, is if you could come up with an evil version of Minas Tirith. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that <laughs> kind of what it is? Well, yeah, it is pretty much what it is. Oh, oh, it's it's wow. Evil Minas Tirith. Glowy. Because... Yes, because it's full of they, evil mist. It yes, probably takes the shape of with, shades and stuff. It's ministerious with night lights. Well, you got to remember is that this is the this was Minas Ethel was the Tower of the Moon, while Minas Anor, which is now Minas Erith, Minas Erith is the was, of course, the Tower of the Sun. So, therefore, this is the Tower of the Moon, and so, therefore, it probably started to have a little bit of a silvery sheen to it even begin with, and then the enemy came in and just turned that silver into a deathly silver instead of a <laughs> instead of a healthy shimmer. <laughs> but that's just my guess on the matter. Sounds logical. Let's go into the community spotlight, where the Gleaming Thread has posted a new look for the Marshal of the Burning Depths. And that is a door a hot place. Terry, anything to say about it? As a dwarf outfit. <laughs> what? It's a dwarf outfit. Yeah, just in case you had anything more to say. Very well. Now, does Christer have that? anything more to say? Okay. Yeah, Christ we have two here. cosmetic experts now. That's right. Well, I'm going to ask. I'm going to be embarrassing myself right now. But what are you guys looking at? Oh, we're looking at the beacon. Ah, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you'll get used to it in time. (laughs) My apologies. So you're wondering what I was talking about when I was talking about Minas Morgul and all? (laughs) I was just going with the flow. Yes, yes, going with the flow. (laughs) (laughs) All right, here I am. And then the first thingy under Community Spotlights, which is the new outfit from the Gleaming Thread. I do really like that helmet. My problem is I don't usually wear helmets. Yeah, those shoulders uh, look like uh, shoulders from an an other uh, cosmetic set, and I've always liked those shoulders. Yeah, that that helmet to me, I have to put that on my Lord Master, and I have to make a Tim the Enchanter uh, (laughs) honorary outfit, because that is so close to Tim's helmet. (laughs) <laughs> I love these articles because people are always using pieces that I've 
either never seen before and never really considered because I don't do a lot with helmets typically because I play a lot of race of man characters and I prefer to see their hairstyles. Um, ditto elves and um, my hobbits all wear the flashy hat because um, you know minstrels and burglars and stuff. You wear the flashy hat with the feathers. <laughs> It's it's weird. My heavy armor characters almost never wear helmets. Yeah, mine are always. I always am looking for the uh, for the right helmet, and also looking for the full helmets too. I just like having the giant armor plated machine charging towards those unsuspecting. Oh yeah, it's terrifying. And then then the the goblins are legitimately screaming in fear. <laughs> and also with cosmetics, Material Middle Earth has returned with a new outfit. Pastel Brilliance. Yeah, this was gorgeous. And it features one of the Isengard cloaks that I will never get. Sob. <laughs> oh, you mean from the instance then? Yeah. It's from the Isengard instance cluster and it's I love all of those shimmering cloaks. I think they're beautiful. I will never, ever get one, and it makes me very sad. <sighs> it's yeah, a lot of a work. Nice it's a lot of work to get one of those cloaks. Yeah, I definitely like the uh, chest piece and legs on this particular outfit quite a bit, and I think it looks perfect for an elf. Sadly, you can't get them anymore because that cosmetic barter went away. What? Hopefully, that's right. Yeah, hope the yeah the cosmetic barter switch to different new stuff, but oh, yeah. hopefully they'll come back eventually. That's kind of what I would assume. It'd be almost like the festivals for the yeah the rotated back end. Now, I believe last week we discussed the, the latest cosmetic lotro that's right here because the yeah reed fishing. fishing that was that was actually my highlight last week. Yes, so BioBreak has a new blog post. Up, titled Lotro Pirate for a Day. And Lil Fritz Adventures continue, and you could read the latest installment, Never None Scared. So let's go to our kin hall. The Covenant of Blades is a tenured, meaning old, casual kinship on the Langeable server where member membership has its privileges. No drama. No pressure, lots to do, and lots of laughs. Uh, we have a core group of invested, interested, and knowledgeable players who are looking for a few more to join us. Now for our weekly comment. Where are your adventures currently taking you? Away from Blomgard. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever the winter wizards send me. Uh, yeah, that does tend to be the case, isn't it? Wherever <laughs> the wizards... Yeah. And Pretty for me, I've mainly been preening at the uh, summer festival. So. <laughs> oh yes, the summer festival returned. So yes, that is another little thing that you can. As for me, I will go to Dunland probably since that's where I am in my main thing that I'm doing on Honor at the moment. And I've been doing that more than anything else. So let's head into our fan site news. Druid's Fire returns with another episode of Gondor Has No Druids. Now... She hinted as a possibility that may be the last episode of that series. We'll have to see on that matter. And also we have a French girl gaming for Lotro Adventures with a French twist. The Token Professor continues Myth Garden Middle Earth. The Dwara Scholar continues with Helm's Deep. Raid Ready with Roxy returns with another episode. And you can watch After Dark with Big Ed Mustafa. Elda takes us on a scavenger hunt. And Red Baron does some big battles. 
And for our screenshot of the week, Tarfithril sets sent in this week's screenshot of the week, which seems to be on top of a beacon. In Rohan. Yeah. You know how you can tell it's in Rohan? Because it's wooden? Because there's a horse on it. Oh. (laughs) Oh, yeah, the horse! Yes! (laughs) I was thinking, is this one And it's wooden. (laughs) I mean, and it's wooden, but there's a horse on it, so it's very clearly Rohiric. Yeah, you get a point there. I'm wondering if this is the Eworth one where where you have to do 7 million jumps in order to get up to it. I don't know. I've never been up there. Oh, you you never did all the Hooth? Uh, Hooth Bowl? I have not. I haven't either. Because the level cap had already moved on Ah. when I finally got there. The first time I was at level cap when it was level cap, it was level 95 right before Gondor first came out. Ah, yes. And then that concludes our beacon for this week. So let's then head into our store sales. And Terry, what's on sale this week? Um, Well, it's Pine Leaf Weekend. So we've got the 25% Skirmish Mark acquisition now through September 29th. And you can get 20% off select quest packs the 100% XP boost, Mithril Coins, yay, Mithril Coins, can always use more Mithril, and Max Morale and Power Scrolls, and then the weekly coupon gets you a plus 100% mark acquisition boost for 90 minutes with coupon code MARKACQ, now through October 3rd. Whee! Because I need more of those. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have enough of them dropping out of my Hobbit presents. I got plenty of you... math and harmor dropping but, out of my Hobbit presence. By the set. time I remember to, that I've got these mark acquisition boosts, I'm done skirmishing. Ah. Oh, no. I never remember to use them when I start skirmishing. I remember after I've been done, oh, I could have used one of those. <laughs> Ooh. It's really sad. Let's head to our new player question. And Sans Window, what's your question this week? Okay, so my question this week. Say that you... Well, my question is, how do you keep a runekeeper alive? Especially if you get into a solo-only instance that will not let you bring a buddy. Well, there goes all my ideas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the easiest idea is have a pocket guardian, a pocket warden, a pocket hunter, a pocket any other class. Um, maybe even two runekeepers would be fine. Um... But if you're stuck on your own, how do you keep a runekeeper alive? Oh, that's an interesting question because I remember that when I was doing my runekeeper series, when I went into Wildermore, I think that sort of is what ended the series because I just <laughs> break it. <in! laughs> Wildermore was just so, okay, where I just said, okay, that's enough. <laughs> squishy runekeepers are squishy, man. They yeah. are. I know that whenever I solo anything, I'm always in yellow line. Is there a keeper? Yeah. Okay. Lightning. Yes, and you can kite. And yeah, you lightning, have that kiting. mass stun ability. Yeah. Right. And your rock can take aggro, and um, so that might be at least a way to keep alive a little bit longer. But. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, when all of that fails, you're still there in your blouse, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, and not being stuck to the ground while you're channeling stuff is helpful, too. True. That's, that's the problem with the fire arcade. The fire runekeeper gets a lot of pretty good DPS, but the fire runekeeper is stuck. Right, yeah. True. I think that was my downfall today, was that I was stuck in place. Yeah, it's not a very good soloing stance. And then you're trying to choose, well, do I finish casting this thing that I've been sitting here trying to cast for the last three seconds? Or do I move out of the way so that this thing will stop hitting me? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that sums it up pretty well. Okay, so follow-up question. 
Say that you are running an in-game runekeeper. How many stupid allies do you have to level up to a decent level to be able to do this? And is it worth it? I am of the opinion of one ally per character. Well, one set of allies per character. I don't go in for multiple sets of allies. But I'm also not an endgame raid type person, so... So you're just running with a set of yellow allies. This sounds like a crystal question, because I have the same answer as Terry Adwin there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> probably feels the same about allies as I do. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's uh, my... I think I have the same philosophy as you guys do, which is with the characters that I'm not really truly uh, preparing for raiding, I'm, uh, like for the Runekeeper, I would just get my... Uh, uh, allies uh, for red for the uh, fire line, and then take whatever I happen to come across for the other two, and not worry about that too much. Because if I'm soloing, it's going to be pretty rare that I'm soloing, anyways. You know, if you're going to be part of a raid group, you're more than likely going to be doing the uh, uh, landscape with people too. But uh, I would just focus on what you're going to be doing in raid, and the two things that. Our case are possibly going to be doing our DPS and healing, and more than likely they're going to be doing DPS. Makes sense. Yeah, because Rune Keeper healing is also time consuming. It is, but I mean, don't get me wrong; it's great healing, but it is yeah. it's definitely. And again, you're stuck to the ground. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, it, that. Uh, um, just a comment, a uh, brief aside on the captain, you know, getting used to the changes. Uh, one thing that's uh, becomes, has been surprisingly difficult for me to get into my routine is that I have to stop in order for my combat heal or my combat res to actually work. I have to be motionless. And boy, that has caused some major problems because I'm used to being able to move around when I'm doing it. Yeah. So, understand I have to stay in still to do it now really is a, uh, has, I have to reevaluate a lot of my tactics because you just don't realize how much you did it until you can't do it anymore, you know? <laughs> right. Then let's head into our week in Lotro. And Terry Adwin, what were you up to? Well, um, wandered around the Gladden Fields with Pine Leaf and Sands, and Maven joined us. Which was super relaxing because with the added hunter, I basically had to kill nothing unless I really wanted to. Like, if I was in the mood to actually fight things, I could do it. Otherwise, I didn't actually have to, like, fight anything or kill anything because it was all dead by the time I got there. Um, (laughs) Which, you know, some days I complain about, but this week I was just not in one of those moods where I wanted to kill all of the things. I just really wanted to get the stuff done that I needed to get done for the questing so that I could go back to the wizard and report and be done. Um, Side note, still not done because the wizards are really annoying. Um, Discovered that uh, Radagast practices bird abuse because... (laughs) 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 So the quest has this poor sparrow carrying an empty vial and then you're supposed to go fill it with water and give it back to the sparrow so that the sparrow can carry it back to Radagast. And I'm like what was he thinking? Plus the, the parchment sparrow is... the sparrow's carrying. Plus plus the parchment that the sparrow's carrying. So I mean this poor bird is laden down with so much junk it's a wonder it can even fly after we're done with it. Yeah that that was really bad. You does he think it was a pigeon or something? Like, whose idea was that? <laughs> well, now, we might be getting confused here, too, because we remember in Karate Kid, when Mr. Miyagi had had him doing all those, the washing the cars and everything, he didn't understand what he was doing, and he thought it was pointless, and then he realized, oh, I just learned karate. So maybe Radagast is just, you know, he's carrying all this stuff, but he's, like, building this massive muscle-bound bird, and... <laughs> You know, maybe that's the plan, you know, that he'll he'll acquire some superpowers by doing this, you know. So. It's a death sparrow. Yeah, and, and then <laughs> at, the, at the end of this um, running around the Gladden Fields, we go back to Gandalf, and Gandalf tells us to go back to Holtfist 
And basically the upshot of this conversation was because I said so. Because he tells us to go there like you haven't been there. And then you tell him you've been there and he's like, you think I don't know that you haven't already been there? You're going to go back anyway because I said so. (laughs) Yep. So, yeah, still really annoyed with the Wizards of Middle-Earth. I'm really ready to be done with them. Um, do- doesn't help that I keep having to hang out with bears. Oh, that's the advantage. When we go back in time, one of the big advantages is going to be that we won't have to worry about wizards. Okay. How far back in time no are we going? Either. Oh, probably no bears either. I'm okay with this plan. Um, and then after that, <clears throat> I made a stat X burglar. Um, because I could. Because I mean, what else are you gonna do with your stat X other than make a burglar care? I mean, I'm gonna. Come on, this is me. I'm gonna make a stat X champion. That's gonna happen because I have. <laughs> Champions of every race that you can be champions in. So the Stout X champion is going to happen. Um, but no, my first Stout X character was totally the burglar. Um, and I went through the intro for the Stout Axes and I thought it was fantastic. I totally want to do it again. It was not like the um, High Elf intro where I could take it or leave it and really was okay. I valored a couple of... Uh, well, not valid, but I've had her in status to a couple of my high elves just to not have to do that intro. Um, I really like the Stout X intro. I would totally do it again. I spent the last half of it going, no, guys, really, seriously, you don't want to do that. Um, because you wind up talking to Skorgrim and he's talking about going to Angmar. And I'm like, like, I know bad places. I came out of a bad place. That's a bad place. Yeah, especially consider who rule, who is the traditional ruler of Angmar. Yes. Well, and they mention him. They're like, the Witch King. Yeah, no, no. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a hard pass on that. I'm not going there. Uh, no, I want to see the Witch King again. I really, really, really don't think this is a good idea, guys. But, you know, the dwarves went anyway because they didn't listen to me because I'm not a dower hand, so whatever. Um, but yeah, I had an, I had way too much fun doing that instance. Um, one thing I will mention, hopefully Standing Stone people get the memo and, and take notes on this. Um, so you level up during the Stout Axe intro because it's like an open instance type of thing with other Stout Axes. So there's a couple of other people that can help you beat on the maggots, which is good because they're level two and you're level one to start and they're a little difficult to kill as a burglar. Burglars need two daggers, people, because at level uh, three or four or five, so I don't know, one of the levels I that four. I hit while I was in, I think it's level four. You get your your fourth skill, because you start with three skills as a burglar. You get skill number four, which is a crit response skill, which you cannot use in the starter instance because it requires two weapons. <laughs> That's a little frustrating. That is. That's It's extreme, because especially when, it, when you can hear the noise and see the little animation that says you're getting crits, but you can't use that skill because you don't have the second knife. Oh. And that would have come in really handy trying to get the heck out of fair tour let me tell you because that was not fun yeah actually one of the things i concluded while i was doing the public part of that starter area was kill the rest first and do some of the other quests then after you gain a couple of levels then go after the maggots <laughs> Oh, no, I was going after the maggots at level one. Because, yeah, but, and that was tedious. <laughs> but, okay, so my playing style and Pineleaf's playing style are not the same playing style, in case you guys haven't figured that out already. Um, Pineleaf is an extremely cautious player. I'm kind of really not, um, especially if it's on a class that I'm familiar with, which I, I know the burglar. I've played it before. Not my first rodeo. So, yeah, not that big a deal. Um, I, I I didn't die, so there's that. But <laughs> yeah, no, the, not having the second knife was really frustrating. Um, because 
and and hopefully they will take that to heart and and switch up the burglar a little bit um i know that they made some changes to how classes to what skills um you get as as a starting character because of the high elf intro um because back when people were making high elves they discovered that champions only had like two skills um and the high elves don't level up in their starter instance so you have like you had like two skills as a baby champion through the entire instance as a baby champion and it kind of sucked you're supposedly level 110 anyway yeah you're level supposedly level 110 and you're doing like next to no damage because you have no skills um and so they changed up the skills that the champions start with and champions actually start with more skills now than they used to so hopefully they will um, take that into account and change up the burglars so that burglars can start with two daggers. That would be super, super awesome. But yeah, that was my week. Christopher, how was yours? Mine was awesome. I uh, managed to, once I understood the uh, pre-sale was available, <laughs> I managed to resist uh, purchasing it for 15 minutes until I saw... <laughs> somebody ride by me with one of the new Warsteed cosmetics and I instantly <laughs> understood that I could fit that on about 13 of my horses. And uh, then I had to, of course, think about how I correspond that with the thousands of outfit combinations I have in my head. And so I res- resisted for 15 minutes and then spent <laughs> pathetically spent a few hours after that uh, redesigning a lot of my outfits, and my horse deeds. So, uh, so that was my <laughs> one thing. Unfortunately, I, I continue to be banned in Harwick, and I'm, it's kind of a long-standing and embarrassing uh, part of Christopher's past. Uh, he never, for some reason, never really got uh, cleared in Harwick, and I don't know what happened to the quest, and I don't know how to actually complete it. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so every once in a while, if he's in Harwick, he realizes he has to be a little cautious. Uh, and then uh, my my uh, Ken has a uh, group we run uh uh, every week uh, called the Bear Buddies, and it's uh, basically all Bjornings running. And so uh, we ran around in Mordor and beat a lot of uh, orcs up. And that was uh, there's something satisfying about having five Bjornings run up on somebody, all go into bear form, and then all go into thrash. It's uh, it's just stupid a... bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they basically it feels like we're just uh, a bunch of uh, bullies that just go around and bully a bunch of orcs and trolls in Mordor for their uh, lunch money, you know, so. <laughs> so that was the excitement of my week. How about you, Sans? <laughs> um, I rolled two new stat axe characters, one of which was a burglar, uh, the other of which was a runekeeper, who is not quite as squishy yet. Um, I mean, in theory, sh- my runekeeper should be more squishy because only level five, but... Against level 5 mobs, my runekeeper is doing great. Um, And then I actually spent more time on my higher level Berg dispelling evil mist in the um, North Downs. So that was fun. Um, And then I launched an unexpected Hobbit Inquisition in Sharky's Slough. (laughs) Because really, if nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, then really nobody should expect the Hobbit Inquisition. Um, I brought a human and elf along, too. It was fun. Um, Two hobbits, human and an elf, and totally launched a Hobbit Inquisition. So, yeah. Taught them a few things, figured out some things that they were up to, and They'll be hearing more from us. Um, and then my runekeeper, uh, my high-level runekeeper, who's now level 120, ran through Buried Door with some friends, way over level, and wreaked vengeance for all the times that I died or came near death in Buried Door on level. So, <laughs> that was pretty fun. Very satisfying. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. How was your week, Pylon? Won- oh, sorry. You've run. Oh, I was just to say, I've run through Goblin Town many a time with that exact same feeling. Yes. Because I've smashed all those goblins for all the times I died in there. <laughs> that is another good place. Um, and, yeah. I can hardly wait to trounce Nair Band. <laughs> I can probably do it now, but I don't have any reason to go back yet, so. <coughs> Next time I'm in the area. 
How was your week, Pine Leaf? First off, I, of course, created a stout axe. And in this case, of course, doing a YouTube series for for this, because whenever there's a new class or race, I always start a new YouTube series. And in this case, it's for a stout axe minstrel. And you say, why a minstrel? It's not a burger because I am already have a current burglar series that I'm doing, and I don't like having another series for a class that I've already doing it that case. And I think that the only class that I had not done series that that's eligible for a stout X, I haven't done a guardian series yet. And I haven't done a minstrel series yet. And the minstrel one is one that I had been wanting to do in the past. So I decided, all right, it's time to do a minstrel series uh, with the stout axes. And I've gotten through the intro, and I've finished up to Thorin's Gate. So we'll see how far I get in this one. And Minstrels are great, because you just yell at stuff and it dies. <laughs> you yell at stuff and it dies. <laughs> now, I notice, at least in my case, it seems like stout axes are, probably because of where they grew up, are not quite as vociferous as longbeards are. I did notice that. They more mutter than shout. Yeah. You can imagine, considering where they live, yelling Baruch Kazat is... So if you hit slash roar on them, they do have some fun shouts. That are different. Okay, I But they don't make that. tons of noise in general. And actually, that's fine by me, because sometimes I find dwarves to be too noisy for my taste. Which is probably why I haven't played too many of them. Oh, if you think dwarves are noisy, why don't you hang around with six captains? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do have a point there. <laughs> and you got to remember, is I play a warden, and I'm complaining about how noisy dwarves are. <laughs> I know, wardens are also extremely noisy, especially hobbit wardens. Yeah. <laughs> they do nothing but yell! <laughs> And on Anor, my warren prepared for an auction. I wonder how much Isengard's going to bid when I get to it. And during the field trip, uh, we showed some mercy and then visited the Paths of the Dead. And and Where we dispelled more evil mist. Yes. And were you the one who decided, oh, let's do the fellowship version? (laughs) No, that was our guardian. I decided that I should go full healing stance for that, since there were only four of us and we were dying. Constantly. Yeah. (laughs) That is very net. The six-player version of the one where you go into the paths of the dead to rescue that boy is brutal. (laughs) Yes. It was kind of fun once we got the hang of it. But, yeah, we were not geared for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're very careful, things aren't too bad. But the first pull... Well, we, we weren't cannot... expecting it, even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it went south very quickly. I think that was the only wipe, though. And then I changed to healing, and it got better. Yeah, you changed to healing, which helped a great deal. I think our and guardian we're... changed to tanking, too. That also helped. Yeah. <laughs> and we we're better prepared for the pools. So, it all... And what was strange is, while in the solo version, the end part is the toughest part, I found that in the six-player version, the end part is actually the easier part. Now, you do have tougher mobs, but you have fewer of them. And I think our big problem that we had was because we were fighting six at a time. Yeah, it was only when there were more than three that we really were struggling. Yeah. And at the end, when you're having just two elite masters, I said, okay, after six elites, two elite masters is nothing. (laughs)
We currently have 18 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support Lotra players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice or EMB guest with us for an episode of Lotra Players News. We did not receive any emails this week, but if you'd like to send us one, you can send it to podcast at lotraplayers.com and you can also follow us on Twitter. The Players Alliance at Players Ally, Lotra Players at Lotra Players, Arendis at Arendis, Piney Fit, Piney Needles, Sans Winda at Sans Winda, Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin. And Krister, how can they reach you? <laughs> one day they will. Let's just Done. let's just put it that way. One day soon they will be able to reach. Yes. Just remember that that before this list existed. I think I went the first year of this show where they're saying and none for pine leaf or something like that. <laughs> the Players Alliance has two shows each week. On Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News. And on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lutch Players News. And that's all for tonight. And this is Pine Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.